So the next topic we're going to cover is called automated white box testing. And this isn't a form of code coverage, but what it rather is, is a way to get software tools to automatically generate tests for your code. So you wrote some code, and the question that we're going to ask is how to generate good test cases for it. Now, of course, one answer is we can use the kind of techniques that I've been talking about for this entire class. We can think about the code, we can make up inputs, we can basically just work hard to get good test coverage. But another answer is we can run one of these automated white box testing tools. And so let's see how that works. What this tool's goal is, is to generate good path coverage of the code that you wrote. So it starts off basically just making up random values for your code. Let's say one, one, and one for the inputs. So now it's just going to go ahead and execute the code. The first question is, is A a prime number? And so it's not. It wasn't prime the first time, it's still not prime, so we're going to return zero. So now that the automated testing tool has seen a path through the code that didn't take both of the if branches, it's going to try to construct a new set of inputs for the function that take a different path. So the most obvious choice point to start with is the first if. So the question the tool is going to ask is, how can it generate an input that's prime? And so to do that, of course, it's going to have to look at the code that tests for primality. So what's going to end up with is a set of constraints on the value of a, which are going to be passed to a constraint solving tool. And the answer, if the solver succeeds, is going to be a new value of a that passes the primality test. So let's say A is three. The automated white box testing tool has come up with a new set of inputs to this function and it's gonna go ahead and run it again. So this time, the first test is gonna succeed. A is prime. We're gonna increment B by three, decrement A by 10, and now A is gonna fail the primality test since let's assume our primality check is only designed to detect positive. Now the new value of A minus seven is gonna fail the primality test and we're gonna again return zero. So the question we have is, what has the tool learned? What it's learned is one execution that falls straight through, another execution that takes the first if branch. So now what it's going to do is try to build on that knowledge to generate inputs that also take the second branch. So it's going to take the first set of constraints, that is the constraints that force A to be prime, it's going to add another set of constraints that force the updated value of A, that is to say a value 10 less than the original value of A to be prime. So it's going to turn that all into a set of constraints, pass it to the solver, and the solver is either going to succeed in coming up with a new value of A or possibly it'll fail, but let's assume it succeeds. And so let's say that the value of A it comes with this time is 13. We're gonna execute the function again. 13 is prime, so we're going to add three to B, subtract 10 from A, giving three. Three is prime, so now we're going to ask if B is an even multiple of 20. If so, we would return seven, but it's not, so we're gonna return zero. The third time through the function, it's gonna add a new constraint. So not only are we keeping all of our constraints on A, but we're adding a new constraint on B, that B mod 20 has to come out to be zero. And so this time the solver, let's say, comes up with A is 13 and B is 20. Now it's gonna execute the function another time, this time returning seven. And so by iterating this process multiple times, that is to say, by running the code and then using what it learned about the code to build up a set of constraints to explore different paths, what we can do is generate a set of tested inputs that taken together achieves good coverage for the code under test. Unfortunately, I don't know of any automated white box testing tools that exist for Python. If you're a C programmer, there's a tool called Klee that you should try out, which implements these techniques. And I encourage you to do this. Klee is a really interesting tool. And so, as you might expect, in real situations, a tool like this might fail to be able to come up with a useful system of constraints or to solve them for really big codes. And in fact, that's absolutely the case. These tools blow up and fail on very large codes, but for smaller codes, like the kind of thing I'm showing you here, they actually do a really nice job automatically generating good test inputs. And as it turns out, these techniques are used fairly heavily by Microsoft to test their products in the last several years for the finding of a very large number of bugs in real products.